Hello, Spark fans, and welcome back to Advancing Spark. So, just a short video today on a little Friday afternoon. I've got a cheeky little beer to end the week, and I'm having a look at Delta Live Tables. So, it's been a while since I've been using Delta Live Tables in anger over the past month or so. So, I thought I'd take a little revisit, and there's a few new things I think it's worth pointing out. One or two tiny little quality of life things. A useful little thing I wasn't even aware of in that they now have release notes that you can go and keep track of what's changed in Delta Live Tables. But also a fairly big release in the form of enhanced auto scaling, a new feature that is just currently in Delta Live Tables. So yeah, we'll have a look at those three main areas and then give it up and go have a good weekend. That's the plan. If you're new around here, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know if you're using Delta Live Tables. Have you found any of these other little updates that the team have been sneaking in over the past few months? And what are you using the most? I'd love to hear from you guys. So let's go and have a look. So I've got a little pipeline here that's broken. So I had a few tables that uh, have gone wrong, but I was just kind of poking around going, right, okay, what, what's happening in there? And that's what prompted me to open it and then go, oh, there's some, there's some new things. So new things that are inside DLT. I mean, firstly, just the whole settings page is much, much cleaner, much, much nicer. They've changed how you configure everything. So when you start off, it's, it's much, much slicker getting started. Uh, if it's been a while since you've looked at it, you might not be familiar with the Core Pro and Advanced modes for Delta Live Tables. Again, if you can help me choose, I'll tell you what is and isn't included. I think most of the time, you're probably going to want to use either Pro or Advanced. Uh, so what's on there? Things like data quality expectations. You have to be using Advanced mode. I use them in all my Delta Live Tables, so it kind of makes sense. I'm always using uh, the Advanced mode. But yeah, have a look. It's cheaper if you go with the cheaper ones. The nice thing that we will be talking about in a bit is that enhanced auto scaling is available for any of the flavors, which is really, really cool because enhanced auto scaling is, is pretty nice. Pretty nice what it does. But we'll talk about that. Spoilers. So, yeah, we've got those things in there. Um, obviously, you've got the various libraries you can have, where it's going to go. You've got your cluster mode. So, we've now got this choice of legacy auto scaling and enhanced auto scaling or just fixed size. There's no longer pick the number of workers you want to go between. You need to pick a type of auto scaling you're also going to use there. So yeah, interesting stuff we can do. Generally, the menu's nicer, different things going on. You can choose whether or not you're receiving preview features. I'm going to have a look at how you know what's in a preview in a second. So yeah, generally nice UI uh, features there. We talked about in a previous thing, we've got re you can refresh fail tables. So you can see that's all of my tables because the cloud uh, key expired. So that's why my legs not working currently. Uh, or we can do the select tables for refresh. And that's when we say, I just want to do that one and that one. I don't care about anything else. And so we can kind of manage uh, that kind of workflow. That's really, really cool. But that's been in there for a little while. The new thing that a few people have poked out, like they've said, what, what's that button? Is if I switch over to the actual notebook that's behind. You can see, there we go. There's my notebook with my various different bits of Delta Live table in there. I've got that button. New little Delta Live Tables button has just snuck into my notebook. And that will tell you, is this notebook currently used by any Delta Live Tables? And if so, what's the pipeline behind it? So if you have a notebook and you open it and it says import DLT, you're like, okay, cool. This is a Delta Live Table notebook. But where is it being used? I've got no idea. Well, you can actually just now see this directly from the notebook. You can see which is the notebook that it's registered with. We can go, okay, that was in that one. Let's go into there. We can open up the one I was just in. We can see that it's still broken, sure. But we could also have started it from in there. So if you want to look at a Delta Live table, and then you see the notebook, you're like, well, I want to start it. You don't have to go around, find the workbook, hit start on that one. You can just hit start from directly in the notebook. So that's nice. It's good. Just recently appeared. I kind of wish they'd put it on there with the other bits, but you know, it's cool. It's new. It's nice. Um, so that was one of the new bits, being able to get back and forward uh, between it. And we've seen that we can also schedule jobs around it. So kind of that's just allows us to really, really quickly add in a new uh, a job that's going to kick off this Delta Live table without having to go to jobs, create a task, create a DLT task, point it at this workflow. It's just thing that's a little bit more integrated. It feels less like a thing that's bolted on the side, more like a thing that's part of the rest of Databricks. So yeah, it's cool. It's nice. It's good. The other bit we had, we've now got a few more links back into um back into spark so we can go and say well i want to have a look at the spark ui the ui metrics i want to go and see what's currently going on on my cluster can go and have a look at ganglia because i'm on development it's still turned on so we can actually go and see what's happening on there 
again just a little bit more plumbed in a little bit like more links just back and forwards from core databricks into delta live tables back and forth so that's nice that's good um the other bit i mentioned so we do have uh release notes so when i do the monthly updates and say hey here's all the new stuff that's happened inside of databricks in this particular uh month or whatever happens to me i tend to go to the docs go down to reference you got release notes and i talk about platform release notes and there's lots of stuff in there now because there's just so many different things starting to happen we've now got different types of release notes so we can go inside our release notes whoops we've got the runtime release notes, we've got the platform release notes, and we've got Delta Live Table release notes. So we've now got somewhere we can go and say, right, what has changed inside Delta Live Tables recently? So we can go and have a look and we can go and see, well, what is the runtime that current or preview is currently working on? So if you're using any features, you're looking at something going, can I use that inside Delta Live Tables? Well, you can now see what runtime they're actually using. So if I was trying to use something that's on um, 11.2, for example, I wouldn't be able to use that inside Delta Live Tables currently unless I was using their preview channel. So you can get a little bit more information uh, if you're using the release notes now. And um, can see the only change that was in this one, there was a fix to a bug to do with, uh, if you tried to run a pipeline, didn't have any events, it would uh, have problems. And there was a, a new feature where if you're creating a new workspace, there's a little bit of a wizard to get you started with Delta Live Tables in. But just again, useful, we've now got that called out as a separate thing. If you're doing lots of Delta Live Table work, that is there and just gives you a bit more information about, should I go current preview? We now know exactly which one we should be choosing. Cool. So yeah, bits and pieces, nice little things coming in. We're starting to see it kind of just getting more and more mature, more and more plumbed into the rest of the environment. Let's have a talk about the new thing. This enhanced auto scaling. This is the thing that actually came out last December. So December 2022, we saw a few blog posts talking about enhanced auto scaling. But what is it? So auto scaling inside spark we've, we've had auto scaling in databricks for a little while and it's a it's i would term it as reactive auto scaling so essentially we can say yes i would like my cluster to auto scale please and it's only when the executors get busy enough it goes oh i'm quite busy i should add another executor i should spin up another node as part of my cluster another worker and then when they're quiet it'll go oh, i'm really quiet i'm just going to start turning them up so it's always fairly reactive and a, a cluster you know a, a worker takes a minute or two to turn on so if i get really 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 busy i'm like oh it's gonna take me a minute or two until i spin up another worker and then i can start giving that some work and then i start getting less busy and when we're talking about things like double live tables when it's a fixed pipeline of work it's either streaming which is just really really spiky and i need to react slightly faster than that or it's it's a known quantity and if i've only just started scaling up by the time i'm finishing well what was the point in scaling up so Auto scaling is super, super useful for big, long running, chunky, chunky jobs or for constant running things that just have like sort of ebbs and tides of uh, things. But it's just a little bit too reactive for, for some of the, what they're trying to do in Delta Live Tables. So they came out with this thing, Enhanced Auto Scaling. So there's a whole blog. I'll put the uh, link to the blog down below in terms of what that does. But we've got this whole new Delta Live Tables Enhanced Auto Scaling. And that's that's important to note. This is only in DLT. It's not a new auto scaling type you'll see in standard interactive clusters or anywhere else in Databricks. It's just for Delta Live Tables. I hope that I can say currently. I would like to see it elsewhere, but I don't know if it necessarily works in other places. Um, so tell you, what this is essentially going to do is rather than being told, hey, I'm really busy. Hey, I'm really busy. And it's only once it's really busy, it goes, oh, I should probably, I should probably get around to turning some other things on. Instead, it's kind of doing a look ahead. It's looking at a query plan. It's saying, right, okay, we're going to start doing things. We're going to start actually kicking things off. But because it's got this whole dependency graph, because it knows once I've finished with this whole Spark job, I've got another 10 Spark jobs that rely on me, and I know roughly how much work they're going to do, it can kind of plan ahead uh, for what's actually going to happen there. So what it means is it knows it's just about to queue up a load of stuff. It can get the workers turning on in time to actually start working because we have more information in a Delta Live Table pipeline, because we have all these dependencies, we've got the big chain of work it's about to do. It's not just sitting there and being told to do some work, do some work, do some work, until it suddenly goes, ah, I'm really busy. Instead, it knows it's going to be busy up ahead. So it can plan out how many slots am I going to need? What tasks am I going to have? At what point is it queuing a load of stuff in? And then at what point am I going to get really quiet so I can start turning things off? 
That's essentially what enhanced auto scaling is. It's just using the extra information it's got inside the Delta, Delta Live Tower pipeline to be a bit more smart about when it turns things on and turns things off. You know, so you can see how nice choppy it is in turning things off, which compare it to traditional auto scaling, that's what we tend to see. That kind of path when it's like, starts gradually turning things down as it starts getting slower, or as it starts getting quieter and it can turn things off, compared to, I know at that point I'm not going to need any more, I'm just going to turn off a load of workers. So what does that actually mean? Well, two things. One, it should mean things go faster because it's going to preempt and it's going to start warming up things and it's going to be able to get extra workers actually in place when you need them. But two, it's going to be cheaper because, well, one, you don't have to over-provision a load of workers so it doesn't have the really slow ramp up time, which we end up having to do occasionally with traditional auto-scaling. But two, it's going to turn things off quicker because it knows in advance it's not going to need them for a while, so it can just go ahead and we're right, turn all those off, get it right, right down. And then once that's done, we know we'll go back up again based on the shape of your query. So a lot of it is, I mean, if you're doing streaming queries, it depends on how spiky your queries are uh, and you know, how, uh, how spiky the throughput is. If you suddenly get a load of stuff and then it goes quiet for an hour and then you get a load of stuff. Um, there are some use cases that go through about how it actually works for those cases and how it actually sort of felt optimized in there. But then, yeah, just certainly turning things off quicker because it knows it's not going to need them means you're going to spend less money on turned on compute. So, yeah, really, really interesting. It's super, super useful to take a look at. So if you're currently using Delta Live tables, uh, I would say take a look at that and see about comparing enhanced auto scaling to legacy auto scaling. Yeah, if you're definitely, if you're using DLT currently and you are using auto scaling, switch it over, have a look, see what the mapping of compute to your actually workload looks like after turning it on. Um, and certainly if you're not using auto scaling inside Delta Live tables and you've got a fixed amount of workers, it's worth considering. It's worth going, well, actually, can we get away with having a lower number of workers but actually scaling up and scaling down and then just, yeah, making making your life cheaper and, and maybe even faster because you can actually afford to throw more workers at it because you're not doing it for as long. Maybe that'll work. So, yeah, just wanted to call that out. If you're not familiar with it, uh, I'll drop a link to the uh, the announcement blog down in the comment, down in the description below. But, yeah, have a look. See how it works out. See if it's any actually going to think the worst it can do is slow down your query because you were not auto scaling and now it's actually got some pieces some pieces where it's kind of adding and removing nodes that's the worst that could possibly happen but definitely definitely worth giving it a go because hopefully it'll be cheaper and faster and who doesn't like cheaper and faster all right that is all i wanted to go through today just a little quick update saying take a look at dlt if you're not taking a look at it for a little while a couple of nice quality of life things going in there but enhanced auto scaling, actually a really cool release. I kind of want to see what more they do with auto scaling because it's been a while since we've seen any real feature releases into core Databricks around it. All right. So as always, I'll do a reminder. We do have the training platform live now. So if you are looking for Spark Fundamentals training, we do have that Spark Fans 10% off discount that is now live. I'll put a link to the training down in the description below. But aside from that, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. And let us know what you're currently doing with DLT, because I'm really, really keen to see what people are doing with it. Now it's been out for a little while. Now it's getting a bit more mature. And now we're seeing some of these nice improvements going in. All right. Enjoy the weekend. I'll catch you next time. Cheers.